This time at April, we're discussing how we're brewing espresso in our newly opened coffee store. Welcome. We're here in the newly opened April coffee store and we're going to walk you through how we're brewing espresso in the shop. Now, keep in mind that our espresso brewing also changes with the coffee. So what we're presenting here today is some general rules, but also a specific recipe for the current coffee that we're actually working with. Now, for those of you that already seen our introduction video to this place, uh, you know we're brewing in a mud bar system. Uh, a mud bar EP system basically, which allows us to do a tiny bit of pressure, pressure profiling, which is kind of interesting. So we walk you through the different settings and the variables we have on that. Also, good to know, we're working with a 20 gram VST ridgeless basket. Now we always pitch that it's very important to know your basket size and dose accordingly to get the best out of your espresso. Now, on top of that, we're also grinding all of our coffee here through single doses on a dating sweep lab, which is kind of unconventional when it comes to espresso brewing. We see a lot of shops around the world working with an EK43 or some kind of designated espresso grinder. Now, we've chosen not to do that basically just because we believe the taste experience we can provide with this grinder is optimal far superior to what we have with, for example, an EK43. We also don't want to spend the better part of our day aligning grinder burrs. Now, so some details just about the espresso. So what we're going to do here is again, we have a 20 gram basket and we're going to be dosing a total of 19 grams of coffee. So that's slightly lower volume than the actual basket size. And this is just to give the coffee a tiny bit of room to breed, right? Because the coffee, the second you're gonna pour water on it, it's actually gonna swell up. So we don't wanna see any marks of the actual screen on our coffee bed after we brew the coffee. This is very important. Now, on top of that, important to know um, is that we're also looking at a volume out, which is relatively long. And it's long because one, we're working with a Ditting Sweet Lab, which actually allows us to extract quite a lot of the coffee and still get a lot of good stuff coming out. And we here at April will focus on flavor, we're focused on balance and sweetness, but we also focus on tactility, right? So we want our espresso to still be espresso, not in the traditional way where that basically means that espresso is a punch in your face, but we want tactility and a body. If you look at the SAA score sheet, most of our bodies is gonna fall in, or most of espresso is gonna fall in with a body from light to basically light plus borderline medium, right? But we never go above medium in terms of serving an espresso. If you're curious as well, we should say that we're using the same recipe for pure espresso and espresso milk-based drinks. We're gonna make another video about milk-based drinks here at April at a different time. So we're dosing 19 grams using these Akaya dosers, which are actually really good for float. We're using distribution tools. This particular one is actually custom made by St. Anthony in the US. Now, when it comes to extraction times, we're always look to extract faster. So the extraction times we're gonna look in for here is gonna be around 20 seconds.
Now, one of the key things with the espresso here is that we're actually brewing it on a slightly lower pressure. So our maximum pressure within this brew is actually up at seven bars. Now, with that, what becomes interesting is the amount of volume that we have on the espresso. So this specific shot here is 55 grams. So that gives you 19 grams in, 55 grams out. Um, and for most people, this is going to be basically looked upon as a very light, almost watery espresso. But because of the setup we have and because of the variables of the pressure profiling as well as the grinder, we actually get a really nice silky texture to the espresso. And on top of that, we can showcase all of those beautiful flavor notes that comes with this coffee as well. On a side note, and the last point in this video is the fact that most of our espresso that we're brewing here is actually three weeks old. So at least three weeks from roast. We've done a bit of different testing and what we come up with is that after three weeks, the coffee seems to stabilize perfectly for our style of espresso brewing. Not saying that all of you working with April Coffee at home now should rest your coffee for three weeks, but it's definitely something worth considering as we find again that the flavor structure is better, it's more balanced, and we have a really good tactility structure in the espresso as well. Now, that was a bit of a rundown in terms of how we do espresso. As always, if you have any questions, any thoughts, you're more than welcome to comment below. We're always happy to take a discussion. With that, we wanna thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your day.